Ladies and gentlemen, hey yo, happy Saturday. Welcome to the weekend. Sunday, if you're watching this then, let's talk about right now that one dude, right? A player, and, and now players at this point, that are going to come in lower on leverage plays. We're looking for leverage plays. What does that mean? The chances of a player being in an optimal lineup versus what their projected ownership is, right? And we don't know the ownership until it drops, but we can project it and pretty damn accurately over on Patreon where my ownership projections lie. So you take those two variables, the odds of being in the, optim the optimal lineup, projected ownership and look at the difference if the difference means that this player right now has a high chance and the ownership is not matching it or a relatively decent chance and the ownership is not matching it that's where leverage comes up let's talk about five of those players right now where there's going to be some nice leverage and lower own plays on this slate and again this slate like we talked about in the friday video the final thoughts the picks video for this week the fact that there's a million dollar contest everybody was getting all fattened up right all fattened up in a good way trust me i had two plates full of four different slices of pie you double that that's eight with ice cream on it and that was just my fucking dessert i mean i'm not even talking about every single thing i had in terms of the meals oh my god it was everywhere and it was a lovely time and, and i'm actually doing another one on saturday another thanksgiving so it's gonna be great yet again right we're talking about that but everybody was preoccupied with that friday afternoon is when people started to think about the sunday nfl slate they had so much football on thursday if that so it's going to be a very good week for leverage it's going to be a very good week in general because people are going to be coming in last second so you have a leg up on the competition so let's start it off right now let's start it off and, and if you have a second of your time today at any point rate this podcast.com slash sal takes two seconds of your time to hit the five stars 10 seconds to just say this is a good show to get you into a chance to win hundred dollars it really helps the podcast side of it and also gives you a chance at a hundred dollar ruski so let's start it off right now with a wide receiver who balled out had a career game last week right and now he's only coming in at less than five percent on i have him currently projecting out for four percent ownership and 12.1 fantasy points this would be a reason why is, is a couple things his quarterback his team and his price tag his price tag came up elijah moore the rookie fifty six hundred dollar elijah moore is an expensive price tag he's more than Corey davis his veteran teammate the guy who's making all the money out there the second highest paid free agent and free agency only behind Kenny Galladay this offseason and Corey Davis from Tennessee right he coming off for the career year and he's finally healthy Corey Davis status was a little bit murky midweek but he's expected to play but Elijah Moore is now going to be low on so that's one of the reasons why right his price tag the other reason is he's now playing with his fourth quarterback in three weeks yes fourth quarterback in three weeks Mike White Josh Johnson Joe Flacco who gave him that career day and now Zach Wilson is coming back which is where the big concern comes from but I'm okay to take some risks with Zach Wilson I mean he's had opportunities now to see the offense in terms of not just taking the deep shots where he's number four in the NFL in completion percentage on 20 plus yard passes Zach Wilson which will help Elijah Moore Elijah Moore in college 99.1% of the time played out of the slot his final year there that's not going to happen in the NFL you haven't seen that because of the fact that Jamison Crowder is on this team but what you did see what you did see on Thursday Night Football a few weeks back against the Indianapolis Colts was Elijah Moore finally becoming that dude in terms of being a starting receiver on the outside. Elijah Moore took over the role for Keelan Cole, another offseason addition by the Jets, and he started to run more routes and be firmly in play there as a leading receiver. And we can look at it right now. In week nine, he took over that role. Then in week 10, he gets 27 routes as a starting receiver, six targets. And then he has that career game with Joe Flacco. Last week, he runs 33 routes, 11 targets, 141 yards. I don't think that you can just put this genie back in the bottle. He's clear athletic he has a solid matchup this week when you're looking at it right they're going up right now the Jets who are throwing the third most in the NFL actually have a 21 team implied total which is good for the Jets and they face Houston the 31st ranked secondary in the NFL if you're looking right now Houston gives up the seventh most yards per game to receivers at 179 per game and against all of these Houston cornerbacks I mean when their whole secondary ranks bottom two second worst in the NFL the cornerbacks aren't going to be great so he'll likely play on the outside against Desmond King who allows a 75 percent catch rate this year he'll see a little bit of Mitchell on the other side who is a undersized cornerback 188 pounds with 463 speed a 463 speed is an nfl quarterback that's why the secondary is so bad elijah moore is going to come in with a size advantage and massive speed advantage a guy who ran a 438 40 elijah moore so that concern for me for the most part is already built into this it's not built into the price point but it's built into the ownership on zach wilson zach wilson who has not been good he ranks 29th in true completion percentage he ranks 32nd in yards per attempt this year averaging just 195 passing yards per game and now coming back off of injury but the matchup is there for him the fact that he's still top five on 26 deep attempts this year, limited sample due to the injury, top five in deep completion percentage is the main thing you saw in college. And that's at least still clicking, which gives you upside here at this price tag for Elijah Moore, who's going to run 30 plus routes on the outside. So Elijah Moore for me and Corey Davis being banged up can help some things out here. Elijah Moore for me looks like a solid leverage play, just 4% owned. And if you want to compare him to some
somebody else in the price range. I mean, T. Higgins, we love T. Higgins, right? We love him right now, but he's priced at this point at 5,400, a little bit cheaper, basically the same price as Elijah Moore, and he's at a 13.5 fantasy point projection. He's coming in at 8% ownership. So double the ownership on T. Higgins. He's projecting out for about a point more right now. I would, if you're building out a lineup and you have T. Higgins in that lineup and you think you have a chalky lineup so far, you just want to get even more leverage. You slide in Elijah Moore for T. Higgins if you have the extra $200, bada bing, bada bang, right there, you have some leverage in your lineup, 4% ownership, half the ownership on a very similar play, if not a higher ceiling for more who can arguably be the wide receiver one on his team when Higgins is pretty firmly behind Jamar Chase. So there's your first guy. And I'll actually slide up right now, just a prop that I've already taken. This is over on prize picks. A lot of you signed up. I think a hundred of you signed up and played the free prop on Josh Allen on Thanksgiving. Hopefully you ended up getting it. They do a lot of great promotions like that. But if you are brand new to the site right now, you get a free hundred dollar bet if you use the code sound. So try it out, right? Use the code Sal, S-A-L. You take the over 43 and a half yards right here that I have on Elijah Moore. I have him for 57 receiving yards in this game. So I like that a good amount, a good amount, right? It's a 14 yard difference or so. So use the code Sal. You get the free bet, prizepicks.com. You can take the over-unders on a bunch of sports, not just the NFL, just props, receiving, rushing, receptions, passing, completions, interceptions, touchdowns, fantasy points, all this stuff. Try it out right now. The free, free $100 bet. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Code Sal gets you that hundred dollar bet so let's go to another player now who is coming and he might i don't think he's going to end up being one percent owned because this news came out friday afternoon but i don't think it's going to come up that much because he's had no sort of reason to get you excited this entire season but you go to another team in new york right not the jets but the giants kenny galladay kenny galladay oh everybody's sick it's disgusting he goes from the lions being a top five receiver in fantasy just a few years back to barely being relevant right now in the nfl kenny galladay signs the biggest contract this offseason for receivers and people People think that uh, Kenny Galladay, Daniel Jones, that's the court, the wide receiver he needed. And I'm sitting there like, this is an older wide receiver who was only a jump ball specialist, doesn't have that much speed and all this stuff. And Stafford just put the ball in the right spot where Daniel Jones hasn't been doing it all that much. And oh yeah, Kenny Galladay this year hurt again. But if you're looking for one week, just one week for Kenny Galladay to actually be a thing for you, it could just be this week, right? He's going to get a matchup here against Philadelphia, which is a fine secondary. It's middle of the pack, 17th. You have Darius Slay banged up, might not play Darius Slay, by the way, might not play, but Darius Slay isn't shadowing wide receivers this year. He plays 75% of his snaps on the left side of the field. So if you just want an easier matchup for Kenny Galladay, put him on the other side of the field and put him up against Steven Nelson, who Steven Nelson hasn't been the greatest this year, allowing a 75% catch rate. And oh yeah, there's going to be a built-in advantage because Kenny Galladay has five inches and 20 pounds on the former Pittsburgh Steeler, Steven Nelson. So the Giants have a 21 team implied total. Not great, but again, for the Giants, it's just kind of what it is at this point. It's pretty decent. $5,100 Kenny Galladay. I'm projecting for 12 and a half fantasy points at currently 2% ownership. That number could go up. I don't think it goes up dramatically, but it could go up over the next couple of days once people start to realize that Sterling Shepard has already been ruled out. Saquon's expected to play, but still banged up. And oh yeah, to Kadarius Toney, He's doubtful. Uh, Dante Pettis is not going to play. He's still on IR. So the wide receiver core right now is going to be Kenny Galladay, Darius Slayton on the outsides. And then I assume, I assume that you're going to see some sort of combination of John Ross and Colin Johnson. So I don't even know who's going to play the slot at this point. None of those dudes are slot receivers. Maybe a little bit of John Ross. But Colin Johnson is basically the worst version of Kenny Galladay. Younger, but worst version of Kenny Galladay, who's just this tall jump ball receiver, doesn't have speed or separation skills. So he's not a threat. You have Darius Slayton on the outside. He is what he is. He's a fine receiver. Some rapport with Daniel Jones. That's about it. Then you have John Ross, who's been solid for the team overall. I think he goes into the slot, but that's the target composition for Kenny Galladay. If there was ever a week for Kenny Galladay to get you there, it would be this week. But the reason he's going to come in low owned is he hasn't done anything this year. People are going to look at his recent performance and see that he hasn't topped three targets since week seven. But people don't unravel it and look deeper into it to see that he's only played one full game since week five, right? He ends up getting hurt when he goes out there in week five, and then he misses a bunch of weeks. He's limited in week nine, and his first actual week back after the bye with full workload was last week, 77% of the snaps, 32 routes against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, where it should be a good matchup, one catch for 12 yards. So it's as bad as it gets, but that performance and the fact that he's been banged up before that are going to keep people off of him when now there's nobody left in the receiving core out there for the Giants. If there was ever a week to take a shot on it, it would be this week when Daniel Jones is going to throw 32 to 34 times. And for comparison's sakes, Kenny Galladay's 5,100 and you have Jerry Judy 5,500. So Jerry Judy is more expensive. He projects out for about 13 and a half fantasy points for me. So about a point more. He comes in at 10% projected ownership. Kenny Galladay is going to be two. Even if you think his ownership gets up to five, which I don't think it will, it's still going to be two to five times the ownership on a guy like Jerry Judy or even T Higgins we talked about earlier is going to be three to four times the ownership, even though their projections look very similar. And Kenny Galladay is going to profile out as the wide receiver one, whereas Judy is still battling with Sutton and Higgins is still battling with Chase in the running game and all that stuff. So I do think this is a very appealing spot for Mr. Kenny G, Kenny Galladay. So 
Let's now slide. We'll slide into a running back for all you beautiful people out there. Hopefully, you're having a lovely day. Right there, a like button pops up. If you're interested in where I'm getting these projections or ownership in general, I project out ownership. I project out my projections, rankings, and optimizer for a bunch of sports, not just the NFL, NBA, PGA, MMA, all that stuff. You can check it out. Discord with a thousand plus members. It's a lovely community we've been growing now for three years, and it has never been as flourishing as right now in the midst of the NFL season. So come on, come on into the family. Let us know when you're in Discord. Come on on to Patreon. It's down below if you want to get in on all of that. So now we'll slide to a running back this week. Who There's a couple of, like, if you want to pay up at running back, you might get some leverage on some guys like Najee Harris. He just looks like built-in leverage ownership-wise. All, all the numbers say that he is. Um, he's not going to be that player here, but he is. He's going to be low-owned, right? He's, he's, he's right around the price point of the, the CMCs, the Ecklers, maybe the A.J. Dillons, which Aaron Jones practicing this week, but still tough to see him coming back two weeks from a strained MCL right before the bye. But Najee Harris will be some sort of a leverage play if you're, if you're looking to pay up in that range for leverage. But if you're just not looking to pay all the way up for running back leverage, and you want kind of mid-range play you're going to find some good leverage on daryl henderson this week daryl henderson who's arguably in the one or two best game environments you have the colts you have tampa bay and then you end up seeing the packers and the rams in terms of overall game environments and henderson's in that game right he's 5800 he's a fair price point i have him for 13.8 fantasy points at just seven percent projected ownership this is all really good numbers for him he's going to come into this game with a positive 33 percent run blocking advantage against the packers run defense i mean they're great at tackling but overall run defense 17th in the nfl dealing with some injuries on their front right now they have a 24 and a half team implied total and he's a fair favorite this week i mean this might be the second or third best spot for a running back like san fran's a big favorite with a big total they run the ball a lot that's a good spot for running back san fran uh the, the running backs in general if you're talking about the overall environments like the running backs themselves and murky statuses on elijah mitchell jeff wilson looks terrible right same thing can be said for new england both the running backs there are questionable they're both priced up like it's tough to get to those running backs this is a spot where it's a good spot for him and it's not that tough to get to him at 5,800. And then you start to look at the season numbers for the guy. It's recency bias where why people don't want to go here. And that recency bias is not justified. It's not like he was terrible in those performances. His team just ended up not playing well. They were on by last week. The two weeks before that, they never were even leading in a game. And if not getting blown out for most of those eight quarters of those two games. But he's seeing a top 10 opportunity share in the NFL at 70%. Henderson ranks third, even with Sony Michelle in the backfield, third in the NFL in snap percentage right now for running backs. It's just the game flow these last two weeks that have ruined him, right? Coming off the bye, but in week nine, he only sees uh, 11 attempts in week 10 he sees five attempts because they're losing by a lot to Tennessee they're getting blown off out by San Francisco in the divisional matchup and people saw that in prime time so these Rams eh, I don't know if I want to go there as much Henderson and eh, I played him in showdown sleets and he didn't do anything for me right but he's still getting there in the receiving game it's not like he was coming off the field for Sony Michelle in week 9 22 routes four targets in week 10 28 routes six targets so he's still this workhorse every down back for the team they're just playing from behind so they can't run the ball as much before this two game skid you had Henderson having 16 or more fantasy points in six out of seven games he had 16 or more opportunities opportunities targets and touches on the ground in every single game so I think he's going to go right back there now that it's off the buy they work out some things they know what they need to fix I don't expect a blow out of anything here which likely means the 16 plus fantasy points for Henderson at this nice price point or close to that it looks pretty good and if you want to compare him to other guys in his range you can look at my tweet here at salvage DFS follow me there Miles Gaskin $5,600 slightly cheaper basically the same price as Henderson basically the same projection at 13.9 points he's seeing a lot of volume on the ground Gaskin getting there through like these fluky touchdowns like last week but the dude has been absolute dog shit on the ground like i mean he's, he's seen like 70 carries in the last three weeks or close to that he's averaging like two and a half yards per carry he's been very bad the offensive line there is not the greatest it's it's trending in the right direction since the beginning of the year but not the greatest and what is miles gaskin coming in at oh 12 percent ownership so nearly ha nearly double the ownership of henderson even though henderson has a better team total is on a better team has a better snap percentage and opportunity share hmm odd so i like henderson as a leverage running back this week a affordable leverage running back too that you can get into your lineups and not have to pay up for and build your lineup around that play player and I take the over 12 and a half receiving yards on Daryl Henderson you can see it on the screen right now this is on prize picks again that free bet up to $100 just take advantage of it a lot of you probably already did from Thanksgiving about 100 of you did or earlier this year if you haven't yet maybe your first time finding me take advantage of it while the offer lasts a free $100 bet if you use the code Sal take the over 12 and a half receiving yards here you can pair it with that Elijah Moore prop earlier 43 and a half receiving yards but Henderson he hit this number in each of his first six games and then in the last couple of games he hasn't gotten there but he's still getting the targets and the routes run it's just this skid on offense in general that they're going through so I think it's completely fine. I like that number. Normally, this number is set somewhere around like 17 to 22 and a half because of the recency bias. His role is not changing. It's just bad offensive play for two games from a good offense. So his role is not changing. Robert Woods being out, if anything, helps that. The role is not changing. He's coming off of games of 22 and 
28 routes, which are some of his highest numbers on the year. I feel comfortable with that total coming down at 12 and a half receiving yards. We smashed the over on that. So now we have two more plays left and they're going to be receivers for you. The first receiver I want to talk about is another rookie, but a very cheap rookie here, right? And he's $3,200 this week. I have him coming in at 2% ownership. I'm not shocked if he comes in at 1% because look, he wasn't the greatest rookie or wasn't the greatest player at Louisville. Nothing in terms of his combine metrics outside of maybe his size stood out in a major way. But $3,200 Des Fitzpatrick out of Tennessee at least is interesting to me this week. Now, a lot of things don't look great here. The worst team total on the slate at 18 and a half, facing a top three, according to Pro Football Focus, number three overall secondary and the New England Patriots for a rookie is not great but he's 3,200. I have him projecting for 8.8 fantasy points. I've been projecting for an 18% target share, but don't be shocked if it's higher, right? This rookie right here is playing on a team that does not have Julio Jones, does not have AJ Brown, who's ruled out this week, does not have Derrick Henry. All of the monsters in Tennessee are gone, right? Those Titans, the Tennessee literal Titans, those monsters, those speed, size, athletic freaks, and those three players I just mentioned are not playing this weekend. So what does it leave them with? Leaves them with Anthony first, scare leaves them with a the hodgepodge of these, I mean, a terrible, right? Deontay Foreman and uh, Dontrell Hillier, just backups of, of yesterday's past, right? The, the wide receiver core is going to be Chester Rogers, Des Fitzpatrick, and Nick Westbrook Akeen. If there's one player to take away, if you're Bill Belichick, I guess it's Nick Westbrook Akeen, but none of these guys are scary to you. So Westbrook Akeen is more expensive. He's going to come in with more ownership, even though Des Fitzpatrick, in my opinion, is a very similar player. Like Westbrook Akeen, similar size overall. They're both like 6'2, 6'3. Westbrook Akeen's like 210 pounds, and Fitzpatrick is like 208. So very similar players here. Uh, yeah, Westbrook Akeen has a little bit more chemistry with Ryan Fitzpatrick. Patrick just from last year and earlier this season, but that's built into the fact that he's going to be 6% owned and Fitzpatrick might only be one or 2% owned. So you can see the comparisons here. Des Fitzpatrick, 3,200, about nine fantasy point projection. Oh yeah. Westbrook about a nine fantasy point projection. He's more expensive significantly. And he's coming in with three to four times as much ownership because people just know his name from a couple of weeks earlier this year, one week that he was massive chalk and yeah, he let everybody down. So I think you can also go to Westbrook. It's not like he's an insane ownership at 6%, but Fitzpatrick is interesting more so in large fields. You're not playing this in a small 200 person field, large field GBPs. He has the size on the outside. I do think it's interesting. He played last week, started in place of Julio, who was out. He ended up seeing six targets, caught a touchdown, had 12 and a half fantasy points, finished as a top 30 receiver that week. Now there's no AJ Brown, so the target share, if anything, will rise even more. So I think that the rookie Des Fitzpatrick is interesting this week. I'm not seeing any prop bets right now to attack with him. None are just out there in the marketplace, but it's interesting. So the final player now, the fifth player is a wide receiver who is also seeing a kick up in his usage, a second year player. Here's so a lot of young players, a lot of rookies that we have talked about in this video so far, right? Uh, the only guy that's the, the old man. I mean, Daryl Henderson to an extent, but more so Kenny Galladay came out as an old man as like a 23 and a half, 24 year old, similar to a Des Fitzpatrick in terms of Kenny Galladay, a little bit bigger, but slower, bigger bodied receiver, older coming out. But this final player we can talk about. And by the way, I appreciate y'all being here again, rate this podcast.com slash Sal. You can just type that into your phone. If you have any second on your time, if, if you're on your laptop and your phone, two seconds, you just hit the five stars. It really helps the podcast overall. It's the main way to reach more people via the podcast side, not just the YouTube. And if you want to leave a review, you get chanced in for a hundred dollar giveaway appreciate that in advance rate this podcast.com slash sal the final receiver resides in jacksonville at forty four hundred dollars he is coming in at four percent on this week look i, I was completely off of the viscous chenault in the redraft process i saw the talent in terms of being a gadgety player cool metrics all that but in terms of what his his actual route running ability separation ability which is what nfl receivers need to do it wasn't there all that much and now it's starting to actually hit him this year so in season long i was like yeah i'm not drafting this guy where he's going to draft it but now this specific situation this week against an atlanta falcons secondary that ranks bottom five in the NFL. NFL. It gives up the second most touchdowns to wide receivers and the role is changing in a positive way for the Chenault. Jamal Agnew got hurt two weeks ago, right? Agnew was playing the slot. He was the most targeted receiver over the last two months for Trevor Lawrence out of the slot. And now you get LaVisca Chenault moving into the slot. Week 10 ran 30 routes, eight targets, led the team. Week 11, 20 routes, five targets. So now he's seen these last couple of weeks, 13 targets, which is leading the team during that time playing out of the slot where, oh yeah, Dan Arnold getting targeted out of the slot a lot. Jamal Agnew was. So I think this is the primary role it's no longer Trevor Lawrence is not having that connection on the outside with Marvin Jones it's now in the slot where he's looking the most so you get a Levis Kishinault at 4400 projecting out for around 11 fantasy points and four percent ownership for me again these leverage plays you play maybe one two of them you're not playing all five of these guys in your same lineup I mean it could work for you but at the end of the day they're leverage plays for a reason there's better plays on the slate they're picking up some ownership playing players who have high ownership is completely fine just balance that with leverage plays i.e. taking a couple of these players here one two right picking a couple of these guys Levis is one of them that I don't think think is a terrible option I mean he's gonna have a primary matchup here against like Richie Grant in the slot have you ever heard of him no right there's a reason why 83 percent catch rate allowed this year Richie Grant in a limited sample and he's allowing the most yards per cover out on his team at 1.65 and
and LaVisca is going to have a 26 pound advantage and two inches over Graham, which is, is at least worth mentioning. So for comparisons reasons, we can compare Corey Davis to LaVisca Chenault. And Corey Davis, I like if he plays, right? There's a little bit of an injury. He's not going to be massively highly owned this week. I have Davis projecting out for 8% ownership. So it's nothing crazy here, but just for comparison reasons in a similar price range, Corey Davis is more expensive than LaVisca. He's projecting out for like a point more, maybe a point and a half more for me. He has a similarly, I mean, a rookie quarterback in his own right, probably a worse quarterback with Zach Wilson. And he's coming in right now at 8% ownership. So double the ownership. So that's an example of somebody you should pivot to. If you have a, what you think is a chalky lineup and you're trying to put a one-off in there and you're in this price range, yeah, I would probably lean. I'd, I'd even go to, I'd, I'd go to LaVisca and leave $400 on the table if you couldn't get better anywhere else in your lineup rather than going to Corey Davis. The money makes you unique. And the fact that he's a little bit lower owned is going to make you even more unique. So LaVisca Chenault, I don't have a prop for him, but if you go over to Underdog Fantasy, which is very similar to Price Picks in terms of props, Price Picks is going to have a lot more prop opportunities, fantasy points, usually a better board in general, but there are some good picks over on Underdog as well. You should always compare your lines. The prize pick number on the quarterback for LaVisca Chenault is 220 and a half receiving yards. I want to take the over, so I, I, I at least compare it to Underdog, and I see it's 219 and a half. Now, it's only a one-yard difference, but if I don't have to pay anything extra, I might as well take the one that benefits me more, right? I want over 219 and a half if I can choose it, over 220 half, because if, if this number lands on 220 and you lose the bet, you lose the bet because you just didn't go and shop the other line, it's going to be painful. And a lot of the time, especially on showdown slates, there's like a 15-yard difference between a lot of these quarterbacks. So I'll take the over 219 and a half uh, passing yards for Trevor Lawrence. I have him in the upper 230s, like 238. We take that on underdog. Same thing goes if you use the code Sal on either prize picks or underdog, you get a free bet up to $100. So if you were to use it on prize picks and you're like, wait, I can do that again on underdog. Yeah, you get a free bet up to $100 if you use the code Sal over there. I take that prop on Trevor Lawrence over 219 and a half passing yards. Again, have him in the 238 range for his passing yards in this game. So there are five players that we do indeed like. No, I mean, I didn't cover. Usually we cover like tight ends, sometimes quarterbacks, but for the most part, we'll stick to running backs and receivers. Another running back to keep an eye on is that Tennessee backfield with Deontay Foreman and Dontrell Hilliard. It, it looks like Jeremy McNichols is, is doubtful to play, hasn't practiced all week with a concussion. They cut Adrian Peterson. So they're down to just two running backs there. And Hilliard played that pass catching role last week. Foreman will kind of be probably your red zone back. So I do think that Dontrell Hilliard as underdogs and decent size underdogs against the Patriots can come into play. Might end up seeing five, six, seven targets at that price range. It's worth mentioning currently projecting out for me for double digit points, right? And also at the same time, going to be about half the ownership, three, 4% owned compared to the Jets running backs of like the Ty Johnsons of the world. So another little tidbit for you there. Appreciate you tuning in a ton. Thank you for being here. We'll be live tomorrow at 9 or 1030 a.m. East Coast time. So be sure to come in with your questions and answers. That's what we do. We talk for an hour, an hour and a half, all your questions and answers. So thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Hope you have a lovely rest of your weekend. A subscribe button is going to pop up if you have two seconds of your time. I appreciate that. And come on into the community if you indeed want to on Patreon. Over a thousand members in the Discord, the Optimizer, all the tools and everything you need to dominate these DFS slates. I'll see you in the next one, gang. I'll see you when I see you tomorrow on that live stream. Enjoy the rest of your day and stay safe, but also stay reckless in the streets.